Okay, I hadn't planned on doing this video, but um, I was working on this amp. This I found in the dungeon. Dungeon forgot I had it. It was all wrapped up in bubble wrap, and um, I unwrapped it and hooked it up and played with it. It had a lot of problems, I guess, from you know being bounced around. These old, you know, I guess this amp is about 60 years old this uh, Swan 1200X so um, just from being in storage and bounced around and moved around and you know forgot I had it so it had been shifted and bounced and moved and and all that and tubes were unseated a few wires had popped off um, you know just from me doing it you know never shifted anywhere never went anywhere just forgot you know that I had it all wrapped up so it's got problems that I was working on it but I think it may have a bad tube or two too because the output ain't right so I dug out the tube tester here this is a uh, converted Palomar 90A that uh, was originally a two tuber and I just converted it into a one tube tube tester with either 6 volt you know 6LF6 type tubes or 12 volt 8950 type tubes and I just put you know the tube in the right socket and you know everything is else is set up and calibrated for it to run one one of those tubes in the correct socket so anyway um, what made me do this video is I had quite a few people lately ask me about you know uh, pi circuits and output circuits and input circuits and and why this and why that or can I look at this or you know the one guy sent me pictures and you know I'm not naming names and all that and you know what about this and some other guys you know looked at the uh, input tuner in the back and it's like what about that isn't that an output tuner no um, so anyway this amp is unplugged and got high bleeders in it so there's no juice on it we made sure it's discharged because i um, gonna run through an amp right quick a, a sweep tube amp and a transmitting tube amp is going to run even more voltage. But a sweep tube amp, for the most part, runs about eight nine hundred volts um, on the top of the tube or the plate of the tube. I should have got out a tube. But anyway, um, when it comes to tuning, you got you got nine hundred volts that comes out of the top of the tube if it's got a plate cap on the top. You got the DC volts and the um, RF volts mixing together and coming you know the DC comes out of this um, plate coil here so the DC comes in there and RF can't go back down there RF blocks the that choke blocks the RF going down um, parasitic suppressor to stop uh, harmonics hopefully um, blocking cap that blocks the DC um, but lets the RF go through and then you got your um, tank circuit or another name is your tuning circuit right you got your uh, tune load and your coil and when you have a tune and a load and a coil is called a pi circuit pi okay if you had another coil after this one a second one it would uh, have better filtering and better tuning easier tuning if it's done right and that would be called a pi l with two coils or if you have just one tuner instead of you know uh, a tune and a load depending on the circuitry and your ohms and all that you can have it on either side the tune side or the load side but if you have one you know depending on the circuitry and what you're trying to do it would be called a L circuit and some amps just use that a L circuit where they don't have a tune and a load okay um, that throws some people off also going by the book basically uh, the tune cap, which would be the first one connected to the um, blocking cap here, 
it's going to, you need about two times the plate voltage. That's why I kept mentioning 900 volts over here. Um, even though it's just RF coming over here, you're going to need this is to be able to handle approximately two times the plate voltage for a safety margin margin you know one time if you cutting it close like you know you got 900 volts you'd want 900 volts but that's cutting it too close for safety you really want this to handle two times that you know people cut corners and all that but um, you know depending on the build quality but you want this to be able to handle 1800 volts in a perfect world and then it goes through the coil and then over here the load cap which is the one before the output this is you know badly done but that's the output coax coming over here the output which would be the load cap and it's even written so on this amp tune over there load over there common stuff but anyway the load cap you need it to run about half the plate voltage right so the load cap only needs to handle about 450 volts you know give or take in an amplifier right since the tone cap you need 2x and that you need half if you look at the split the spacing on the plates of the cap that one's not that wide but it's wide right see the spacing in between those um, um, caps plates of the cap see the spacing on this one hardly any right See the difference in the spacing? Because again, this one has to handle 2x the voltage. That one has to handle half the voltage. Um, so therefore, in an amp, you'll always see the tune cap uh, have the wide spacing. But the wider the spacing, the less capacitance. But that's okay. Because the tune cap also needs um, a lot less capacitance then this load cap usually about four times as much and approximate how many uh, how much capacitance in total you need to tune a, a, a CB 27 megahertz sweep tube amps you need about 50 picofarads give or take you know depending on your uh, uh, play current and your load and all that but you know approximate thing and over here for your load you need approximately 200 picofarads right so with these being spaced a lot closer together, you're going to get a lot more capacitance out of the closely spaced one as you do the widely spaced one. So that kind of works out. So always, you know, you can open an amp and you'll see the um, wide spaced one will be the tune and the closely spaced one will be the load. Um, you know, just simple math you know about these things so that guy who sent me the pictures we ain't mentioning no names they had taken a uh, some amp apart and mono banded it and when they put it back together they had it reversed they had the um, the uh, closely spaced load cap in the tune position and the tune cap over here in the load position and remember I said that uh, you need about 200 picofarads over here for the load and usually these caps like this they're about 50 picofarads per section and it's three sections to this if you notice this is then it's only using one section and this middle section is not used and this last section is not used because all it needs is 50 picofarads and this was enough so it's only using the one section over here and the same with this. Each of these sections is approximately 200 picofarads. And for 10 meters, 11 meters only, that's all I needed was about 200. So this one over here is not used and that one's over there is not used. But when that person switched them and got the uh, tune cap in the low position, uh, where he needed 200 picofarads, and all, he, they had all three of them hooked up, so they were using all the capacitors. They had all three hooked up. But it wasn't enough, so somebody added a fixed capacitor, you know, to that circuit. Because it wasn't creating enough capacitance for it. And they were asking me, what's that fixed capacitor in there before? They haven't seen that. It's like, well, 
they got the capacitors mixed up and you know because this wasn't providing enough capacitance they did that put in a fixed one to add the capacitance to try to get the thing to load up but it'll never work right when they're using the um, load cap for the tune because that cap will not handle that 2x voltage that it needs over here okay and I also had uh, people and I've had it in the past and I've had a few people see amps with a um, capacitor like this you know in the amp underneath in the back and they're like hey isn't that the tune or the load no um, these little mica capacitors here these little tremors they make two voltages as these you know one is 250 volt one is 500 volt and uh, they don't handle a lot of current they basically you can maybe get away with using one of these for a load on a smaller amp because again that's half the voltage maybe you know that's pushing it but and it definitely won't be a tune cap because again 2x the voltage and those are either 250 volt or 500 volt they won't handle the voltage so anytime you see one of these it's usually on the input side of a um, circuit of something it's going to be an input tuner or input trimmer or you know trimmer for the watt meter input SWR um, maybe the uh, driver load or something like that but it's never going to be the uh, hot side of the um, of the tune circuit when you see that and I get a lot of people who you know see that and like well you know hey I see that that's that's got to be the load right so no so anyway, that's my quick thoughts. And since I got this amp open um, and I'm playing with it again, it's the same circuit set up the same way. The wide space one is the tune. Um, and over here, the closer space one is the load. Um, that's basically uh, what you're going to see in a sweet tube amplifier. Even more so in a transmitting tube because they run on more voltage. So if you got an amp running at 4,000 volts or, you know, 2,000, 4,000, you will see a very wide space um, tune cap. Or they go to vacuum variables because vacuums can handle that voltage. And also, if you see a ham, bam, ham band amp, as they go um, up the band like 15 meters, 20 meters, 40 meters, 80 meters, which is down in frequency, they need more capacitance. They need more coil and more capacitance as they go up and down the band. And hence, you know, you need just 50 picofarads. So one section for, you know, 10 meters, you know, maybe for 20 and 40, you would hook up two. And then for 80, you would hook up all three of these. And it would be, you know, the same over here with the load as you go you know um, up the band in, in the, the meters or down in frequency you need more and more capacitance and hence you will see a ham band with you know all the coils switched in and then switch in the um, other sections of the tune and the load because they need it for those other frequencies and same with the coil, you'll switch in more and more coil as you go up the band. But again, for a um, 10 meter or 11 meter, you know, they they both will tune the same. You don't need to do anything special. If it tunes on 10 or it tunes on 11, you need not that much capacitance here, but it's high voltage. About 200 picofarads here. You know, I've seen like Black Cat. Uh, some of the amps they used a couple fixed capacitors in series for the uh, tune so it has them it's just not variable and I've seen that blue Palomar amp the new blue Palomar not the old style Palomar that one with 460 146's it switches in a couple different type of, of load capacitors fixed load capacitors over here instead of a variable and I actually contacted them to see you know why did you do that and they said well basically cost you know these capacitors nowadays are you know around 50 bucks each right not cheap whereas if you you know use a switch and switch in a you know two or three different you know um, fixed capacitors you might be talking about five bucks total so you know five bucks 
versus 50 bucks they say they sell 45 dollars you know by doing that so that's about all i wanted to go through today and same over here um using one section of this three section capacitor about four turns of coil and you're using two sections over here because this one is kind of wide space so um, two sections to get that 200 picofarad and then that straight line out all right that's it for this one hope it helps somebody bye